Welcome to the Embarcadero Field Service Industry Template, which is a RAD server solution. In this demo video, we will be covering the Field Service Admin Client, which is a RAD Studio FireMonkey-based client application designed for desktops on Windows and Mac OS. The Admin app can be used to create and edit appointments, view completed appointments, create and edit parts, and create and edit users. Now, this application can probably also run on mobile devices, but it's mainly designed for desktop devices. So if you don't have the field service industry template yet, you can go to the tools menu and bring up the Get It Package Manager and go to industry templates and then you can download it. I've already downloaded it so I don't really need to download it again. So I also have my RAD server development server running here in the background and so the field service admin app is going to connect to this development server for its data. And, and various REST endpoints. So I'm going to move back over here. And so we're going to run through the admin app here. I'm going to compile it to Win32. And we're going to investigate the various features that it has. And then we'll come back and we'll look at the development side of the application. So it's loaded up. And so it's already hit the server once to get this initial tenant list. So I'm going to click on this list. And so this is where you can select your branch or tenant. And so if there were multiple tenants in the list, you, you could select a different, different tenant. And then the, your data would be segmented to that tenant only. So if you had multiple branches in the organization, you could have separate data for each branch. And so I'm going to bring up the RAD server over here. And you can see here is our tenant endpoint got hit by the field service admin client. So I'm going to log in. So this is the admin client. So I'm going to log in as manager1 because only managers can log into the admin client. And I'm going to use a password of password. And I'm going to log in. Okay, so we've logged into the admin client. This is our user over here on the left, field manager. And so we have our profile image. We have a team multi view over here on the left. We have the various tabs. And then in the center here, we have our list of all the appointments that are available in the system. And so we can search these appointments locally here using this box at the top. So you can see how that is a local filter. And so you can also you can edit these appointments by clicking on them. And here's all these fields that you can edit in the details of this appointment. And these fields are all live binded, so they automatically, there's, there's not much code here. They, they, when you make changes, the live bindings automatically updates the FD mem tables so to take the new changes. So we're going to go back. We can also add a new appointment here, and we could fill out all those fields and add a new appointment. So over in the history tab, you'll see that these are existing appointments that have already been completed. And so if you've watched our field service app client video, you'll see that we have our note here that we entered. And so that's that's showing up on the server. That was the note we entered in the, in the other video in the app client. And so it was uploaded to the server and marked as completed. And so now here we can see in the admin client that that actually has taken place and the server has gotten the message. So we're going to go back to history here, and then we're going to go over to parts. And so in parts, you can add or edit parts. So we're going to click on a part, and so you can add photos to a part. You can make all these other field changes, and then you can also add a part here. And so you can you can filter the parts just like you can filter the appointments. So that does a local search. And then over here on the users table, these are the three users. There's the two technicians and the field manager, which is my account. And so on this, you can search their last name and, and or you could edit a user and you can change their, well, you can't change the username, but you can, when you add a new user, you can set the username and then you can also set their group. So if we go back, we could add a user here and we could set their set their username and set a group. So when we do a set group, we can select what they're going to be. They're going to be a technician or a manager, and then that governs which permissions that covers when they log in and which, which app they can log in. So we're going to go back and then we're going to move on to the data sync tab. And in the data sync tab, this is where it downloads those three tables, the appointments table, the parts table, and the technicians table, and saves them into the memory on, on the admin client here. So we can also use the multi-view over here to navigate through the various tabs, and we can also log out. And so we can push this refresh button here and re-download the data, and if we pull up 
the RAD server, development server, you'll see that these endpoints were all hit and it downloaded that various data and groups. And that's pretty much how the RAD server field service admin client works. Uh, as you can see, you can make changes to all those different fields and that all updates the server. And then the admin or that the client app can, can access all that data. So we're going to close that down and then we're going to investigate the design time here for a minute. So how it works is that we have a tvert scroll box which covers most of this form here and inside the vert scroll box we have a tab control and so the tab control it has two tabs it has the login tab and it has the menu tab and so down here at the bottom we have these two dots and so these dots are only visible at design time and so we can click back and forth and see the different tabs and so you can click over to this menu tab and then you can click and design these other tabs so inside each of these tabs is a frame and so for example this in the login tab we have the login frame so if we go over here we can bring up the login frame and so if you want to make any changes to the login frame you need to make it over here in the login frame and then we'll automatically update over here in the main frame or the main form so for example we're going to go over here and we're going to change this to my field service we could change the logo here too but just for for looks we're going to change this to my field service and you can see it made the update here now if you ever have to if for whatever reason the update does not propagate over here you can remove this frame and that's why you wouldn't want to make any changes here because this frame is kind of a it's not the main frame so if you ever have to remove this frame you can you can remove this frame and then you could do over here and you could do a tool palette search for frame and you could drag that out and so you could pick the login frame and I'm going to rename it so it's just login frame. And then I'm going to change its alignment to client. And so now we've we've totally refreshed the frame and whatever changes we had made over here in the login frame. So let's investigate some of the other frames. So we have our appointments frame. And so the appointments frame is very similar to the main form. It has our appointments tab control and it has appointments list and an appointment tab. And so on the appointment tab, we have all our details. And on the appointment list, we have our T list view. And so you can toggle design view with the right click here. And you can see these are all the fields that we've added, and they dynamically change depending on your device resolution and size. And so you can add and edit fields here. And you can put more data or remove data. And those are all set up using live bindings. And then we're going to go down here to the bottom of this frame and we're going to see the other tab. And so this is the detail tab. And so when you when you view an appointment or you want to edit an appointment, you get this detail tab. And so all these fields here are live binded to the TFD mem tables. And so they utilize these bind sources to connect to the FD mem tables within the data module. So let's investigate some of these other frames and then we'll go look at the data module. So there's the history frame and the history frame is built very similar. It has its history tab control with its tab list, or its history list, and its history detail page. And so we've got the parts frame, which is also very similar. We have the queues frame, queue frame, the text frame. So let's bring up the, the queue frame, so it's a little bit different. And so it just lists the, very, the three different pieces of data that are downloaded here. And then this frame has the code that downloads those from the server. And so th there's, let's see here, we've got, we have, our ten we have our tenants data module. So the tenants data module, it holds the components for downloading the list of tenants that we saw in that very first login drop-down box. So then we have our tenants list form, which we also investigated. And we have our text list form, which, which shows the list of users. And finally, our groups list form, which shows the list of groups. And so you can just select those three things from those three forms. And that's the sole purpose of that form, is just to select those from those lists. So finally, we're going to go over to the data module. And in the data module, there's quite a few components here. And so one thing else I want to mention is if we go back to this main form, you have all these non-visual components here. And so you can hide those if you'd like by going to Edit, Hide, Non-Visual Components, you can, or you can just push Control H. So that just shows and hides those. It's much nicer looking with them hidden, but if you need to access them, there they are. 
And so we're going to go back over here to this data module. So on the data module, we have our back end off component and we have our Let's see, where is it? All right, here we go. So we have our EMS pro provider component. So the EMS provider, it plugs into the backend auth component, or it's, I guess it's the other way around. The backend auth component plugs into the EMS provider, and then the backend users also plugs into the auth component and the EMS provider. And the same goes for these others, the groups, the get appointments, get parts, get techs. Those all plug into the EMS provider and the backend auth component. So we've got our other controls here. We have some various mem tables. We have looks like some local SQL going on with the with the SQLite driver. We have our FD connection, which is utilized for the local SQL, and we have our T FD query components, various components here. We also have our post component for making edits here, and our delete component for posting those those deletes up to the the REST server. And that's pretty much the data module. There's a lot of components there, that's for sure. And so, but if we go in and look at the code, there's really not, not all that much code here because most of these components are all live binded to the various controls where they display data. So that makes it really easy to edit this field service admin client. So be sure to check out the other videos in this series for the field service industry template that we have the field service industry template client app and we also have the client the server app and we have the setup app so be sure to check out those other videos and thanks for watching